Welcome to Mentality Meets, conversations that explore mental health stories and strategies to help leaders like you change the culture of mental health in your workplace. I'm Peter Larkham, and today we're going to be talking with Anila Rose. We're going to be talking growth mindsets, how to find your talents, and who do we learn from. Anila came across growth mindsets five years ago at her kids' school, parents' evening, and now she won't stop talking about it. It impacts on her work, her home, and her sport of powerlifting. So here's my conversation with Anila Rose. everyone it's really nice to um, be invited to um, share my experiences and uh, some insight with you today thank you Peter for inviting me I think um, it's because we've been stalking each other I think Peter probably to and be it's fair. worked and it's worked so um, yes he- here I am and um, yes there's uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of experiences and insight that I can share through the journey in work and out of work that um, I'm in a position now where I just want to share those experiences with as many people as possible and through talking with you Peter you felt that that's something that could go down quite well with your audience I think so I mean it's it's totally one of those uh so you and I, we've, we've been connected for a long time and we keep on kind of bumping into each other and, and stuff pops up. Um, and it just kind of got to a point where it was actually a, another client contacted me and said, do you know anyone who would be good for, for this opportunity? And you were literally the first person that came to mind. So I pinged you an email uh, and then we got talking about doing mentality meets. It, it kind of was a little bit of a whirlwind uh, and you got on board. So thank you. I want to know about you. Have you ever been in any situations where you've met that crossroad and had to decide, do I, don't I, can I, can't I, and all those questions? Yeah, that's a great, great, great question. And yes, to to all of that. And it continues. It never stops. Um, And it's part of life's journey. And I think it's very much for me about how I approach each of those crossroads. Um, How do you go about making the right decision? And um, through various things that have happened in my life, not only in work, but out of work, Um, I've been in that situation so many times and I think for me so just very quickly I own Rose Media Group a PR and digital marketing um, agency and um, outside of work I'm very heavily involved in sport so um, I do a lot of uh, powerlifting and have have, have, um, achieved quite a bit uh, in my sport so there's different um, facets of my uh, life and with each one there are various challenges that I have to overcome um, and it takes a, a very strong mindset uh, to be able to overcome those, the physical challenges with the powerlifting. So with me, it's about how on earth am I going to lift that really heavy weight? You know, I'm only five foot two. I weigh just over eight stone um, and I am um, pushing myself to really lift heavy. And how am I going to do that? Um, so that's that's quite um, a challenge. And then in work, my biggest challenge, I would say, that I've had to overcome is the growth of the business. Um, I've never really wanted to have a really big company. So I've had to push back on its growth because it's not what I have wanted. Much of the dismay of my accountants and my business advisors, um, I have wanted to maintain quite a small business. So I've um, had to deal with that challenge of um, being successful, but also moving from being just a freelancer and it just being me to taking on staff and knowing how to do that seamlessly when, you know, I hadn't had management training years ago um, and growing the business. So I had to overcome that hurdle. And then since then, I'm now, our business is now 16 years old. Um, we continue to grow and it's managing that journey. I mean, this, for me, this all sounds brilliantly fascinating because it's so easy to forget that actually there are so many times in our lives where we reach those anxieties, we reach those worries or those concerns, and we either crumble to it or we overcome it. And I suppose in the conversation around mentality meets, it's about learning how do we overcome those anxieties and those worries and those fears uh, just as much as acknowledging that they are there and I need help you know and sometimes it's the reaching out for help that enables us to to get over 
those hurdles. So just a couple of responses from our audience. So great question. Thanks. And yes, been at Crossroads several points in my life uh, and basically hung around and waited for inspiration before moving on. I think that's really key is that actually sometimes it's very easy to, to just kind of run at it and try and overcome it. But sometimes we need that inspiration and the people alongside us. Uh, another person got, yes, Crossroads, ended up married with kids. Best thing ever. Now, that's a fairly big crossroad in your life, isn't it? So um, someone's just mentioned about children. That's something I wanted to talk about, actually, because I'm really inspired by my own two children. And it's become really evident during this lockdown period as well. But actually throughout my my life since having had my first child at uh, he's now 10. And I when people ask me who inspires me, it's not celebrities. It's not well-known business people. uh, It's my children. And it's the behaviours and how I manage uh, behaviours and their approach to learning um, and how they talk to me um, that uh, that inspires me. Because through that, what I've seen is that I learn about myself and how not to do things, how not to talk to them because it doesn't give back the right answer or the right behaviours back or how to talk to them because I am getting what I need out of them and I'm seeing positivity with them so I'm really pleased someone's mentioned that about children because I learn every day from my own children and I post on LinkedIn you might if any of you follow me you'll see that I post about my children now because every day I pick up something from my kids they'll say something or they'll react in a certain way that really makes that stays with me all day I'll take it into work with me because I'll think about how they behaved as a result of my tone the way I said something the words I used and um, I do something physically as well with my children I've got a seven-year-old daughter as well and obviously they're, they're, both, they're both small my children because they're, they're children so I actually go down physically to their level when I talk to them and when it's something serious I actually kneel down uh, people in the office will know this as well I often kneel down in the office when I when I'm talking I don't like to tower over people even adults which is quite uh, I'm only five foot two anyway so it's quite rare <laughs> that I tower over anybody um But yeah, children is really, really important. And for me, the whole mindset approach um, is stemmed from from children, from kids. And it's something that I learned from my children's school. My uh, children's um, school has adopted a growth mindset. And it was through a parents evening, believe it or not, that I attended where the parents were invited to learn about a growth mindset and why the school had adopted that and was teaching the children about it because I knew nothing about it. This is about five years ago. And as I was sitting there listening to the head teacher talking about this growth mindset approach, which I really didn't know much about, I'm thinking, my children are never going to adopt this. They're not going to get it. But you know what? I get it. I love it. And I took it away from the parents evening. It was supposed to be for the children, but I took it away and I researched it. I looked it up. I found out all about growth mindset and that changed my life five years ago. And to this day, and my team at work will tell you, growth mindset is my whole approach in and out of work. It has transformed my life. And it's not a case of me just bantering the words around to you oh, let's be positive, you can do it, mindset, mindset. For it to be effective, you've got to understand what it really means. And and Peter, there there, there are two things really that people need to know. You need to know where you sit, what kind of mindset have you got? And only then are you going to be able to make this work for you. Okay, hold on, there's so much in there blown your mind completely it's a massive massive subject I can talk about it for hours and give you so many examples as well in work and out of work um but I'd love to explore it a little bit more now let's well let's do that let's do that okay so my next question to you then Anila growth mindsets what on earth are you talking about yeah what does it actually mean it's um it's a phrase that all of us on this uh, call i'm sure are hearing almost on a daily basis now we're hearing about resetting your mind positivity you know let's be positive guys come on surround yourself with positive people successful people 
I hear it all the time. I read about it on LinkedIn, on social media. But what does it really mean? What does it mean to you? Do you understand what that means? Um, I don't think a lot of us really do. I didn't prior to going to my kids' school five years ago and learning about it. So what does it mean? What does growth mindset mean? What I'd, all, what I'd like you all to think about while I'm speaking now and explaining this is where, like, re, be really honest, be really honest with yourself and how do you behave and how do you think in particular situations? So there are two types of mindset. Now, growth mindset is a phrase, um, an approach that was coined by Dr. Carol Dweck, a U.S. psychologist in the 80s. And it was through her research. It's all evidence based. It's not hearsay. It's evidence based through monitoring people's behavior. She could see a pattern. And this is where it's come from. So there are two types of mindset. You have a fixed mindset and you have a growth mindset. And they are types of behaviors and approaches to learning and development. A fixed mindset, so a fixed mindset, this is basically an ability, an ability that you feel it's unchangeable, it's fixed, there's no movement, there's no, you kind of rest on your laurels um, here. You believe that talent um, gets you to places rather than actual hard work and developing skills. Um, you believe that intelligence, skills, creativity are absolutely fixed and there's no movement in that, no matter what you do. That's a fixed mindset. Um, a growth mindset will be where abilities can be changed, developed and strengthened, basically. So in a nutshell, um, you, you believe that you're, bo you're, you're born with a certain set of skills um, and talent but you can develop these so for me a growth mindset is capable of huge growth of huge positivity with a growth mindset and with uh, a fixed mindset I actually believe it's rather dangerous it's rather it's negative um, and if you adopt a fixed mindset if that's how you uh, feel and believe then I believe it will sabotage your health and your happiness if you have a fixed mindset so they're quite bold statements. But that's what I believe. And I have seen it. So we'll get back to that interview in just a second. I want to tell you about a video course I made called Mentality. It's a one hour mental health video course delivered by me. It gives you the need to know essentials to spot the signs of poor mental health and take action. So here's what other people have said about it. Maria said, I was surprised how it made me think about myself and even my friends and family. Patients feedback said, mentality is eye-opening. It helps you support someone to get the help they need, perhaps potentially saving their life. James's response says, it was the best course I've been on. I had the attention span of a gnat and I was gripped for the whole time. You see, poor mental health is devastating so many people all over the world. And yet, despite a general recognition that there's a problem, very few people know what to do. We miss the signs of poor mental health, or if we see someone struggling, we don't know what to do. And that's where mentality steps in. It's the need to know essentials on how to spot the warning signs and take appropriate action to respond. All packaged together in a digestible one hour video training course for your workforce. It's designed for everyone because every person, whoever you are, can be affected. To access Mentality, simply visit www.mentality.work. That's www.mentality.work. Click on Enroll, add your details and enjoy. Mentality, spot the signs and take action. And so here's the second half of our interview. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to piece what you're you're putting together into into kind of a, a self context um, and trying to figure out kind of where I sit in the context of fixed and, and growth mindset. I don't know kind of what the audience is thinking. Kind of where are you on this? Um, and it is, I always find this a little bit vulnerable, Anila, because I have to bear bear my soul a little bit um, as we go through this. But I suppose kind of before. Before setting up a business, it was very much that fixed mindset, that failure mindset. And if I 
if I fail, I want it to be on my terms um, because I haven't tried, not because I'm not good enough. Didn't quite know kind of what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, how I wanted things to be. And I would say now I'd like to believe, and I, I honestly say like to believe because I don't know whether I'm fully there yet, but in setting up the business and overcoming probably that biggest hurdle for me, it allowed me to begin to explore, so what am I, what do I want to do? What What is driving me? And it comes down to that kind of hopes, dreams, aspirations. What do I want to, to see happen and achieve? And I think by chance, the emotional literacy side of what I did turned into the mental health stuff that I do now. And all of a sudden, the background of the the training and experience that I had suddenly fitted with the, the concept of emotional literacy, mental health of where I am now, and gave me this desire to expand and explore it, not only in the context of what other people were saying, but actually in my own worldview and the, the context that, that I have. Um, so am I right in thinking that there are two different mindsets going on there? Have I, have I kind of got what you're saying or am I still missing it? Because I have a feeling that I'm probably still missing it. So uh, dig in a little bit further, Anila. Yeah, no, it's it's all quite normal. What you've just described is pretty much, I think, how most people feel. There's 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 a mixed mixed set of feelings and emotions and behaviours. And do remember that this is a very personal thing, and everybody is different. So when when we talk about fixed mindset, growth mindset, and how you should behave and what you should believe. Um, It's very, very personal. So you can't have a blanket approach to this at all. Um, You have to, I say this, you have to kind of play to your strengths, your individual strengths. And I'm a firm believer, and I've always believed this, even when I set up my business 16 years ago, and it was just me and, and then within the first year, my first employee, I believe that everybody, everybody, no matter who you are, has a talent in some area, but not everybody recognizes it. But it's those individuals that recognize it, that pick up on that talent, whatever it is, and then make something of that. They're the ones that have that have basically grasped that opportunity. In the context of talents and moving yourself forward, how can people begin to identify it if they're struggling to identify it as we talk about it today? It's taking a step back. Um, it's taking it's it's. I think it's simplifying it and removing yourself from the noise and the clutter that might be around you, because I think we're all influenced by people. We're also intimidated by people. Um, and that's something I think I, I I suffered from years and years ago, where I would look at successful people and I'd be really intimidated by it. Now, that is a, an attribute of a fixed mindset. Um, so, you know, I think we, we all, I think a lot of us, um, feel this, you know, we're affected by social media. We're affected by people that have got a lot of likes, a lot of followers, a lot of engagement going on, um, that are really success come across as very successful. We're intimidated by that. And, um, it's quite a hard thing to kind of overcome. How do you overcome that? And for me, it's about basically not trying really hard not to be affected and influenced by other people and what other people think of me and it's really hard one to compute isn't it because we all care about what others think of us especially I would say I'll say this I think um I think females we're an we're an emotional we're very emotional I think females particularly um it's how we're made it's how we're genetically made and I don't there's no disrespect here to to to, to the men on the call as well but I think we um need to be very mindful of the differences we all have and I think this is something I've learned through time of having my business having different types of people in my business that we're all individual and it's recognizing um, your your talent, your skill, the area that you're most comfortable um, in. And then it's actually playing to that strength and telling people about it. 
you know, and we, we do shy away. And I work in PR and um, my team will tell you that I do sometimes shy away from doing my own PR on myself. You know, I'm on this call. I do. I public speak. Um, I'd love to do a TEDx. I'd love to be a TEDx speaker. That's my dream. Um, you know, I did my first public speaking stint when I was 10 years old to a group of 200 people. And my father said to me, my father's no longer with us, but he said to me um, that um, that's your thing, Anila. Although you're really nervous, you feel sick to your stomach, you're crying. And this is when I was 10. You went out there and you did it. My daughter went out and did it. And that is a strength. You overcame it at 10 years old and you went and you did this. And I've never forgotten that. And to this day, when I go out on stage and I talk to hundreds of people, I have the same feeling. Coming on this call, I actually felt my heart rates went up. I thought, you know, am I going to say the right thing? You know, we, you know, I, I, I get very excitable. You know, I have so much in my head I want to share with people that, you know, I think it's, it's, um, it's a very individual thing is what I'm saying here. And I think you need to be able to recognize your own strength, your own weaknesses, and don't be shy of sharing that with others. Because when others know, they will then treat you differently, and you may well get the outcome you were seeking. Is there any one thing or any kind of final statement that you really want the audience to to go away with, to really kind of dig into, to help them find this growth mindset, to help them find their talent? I don't know. What What is your thing that you want our audience to take away today? Yeah, I think for me, it's about um, knowing who you really are um, and what you have to offer and then playing on that on those strengths because they are strengths and you are really really good um and you probably don't realize it and i think when when that moment hits you that you do actually like yourself it's actually all right to like yourself believe it or not you know and once you you know i've I've actually got goosebumps saying that because it took me a long time to actually like myself because you know I had a bit of an identity crisis when I was younger took a long time for it to go away and when that moment hits you that you know I'm all right I'm I'm an okay person actually and doesn't matter what other people think of me when you have that moment it changes your whole outlook and then you like yourself and then you naturally just feel happier and it actually affects who you are and how you speak and actually ever since that moment that I now like myself I have a little gleam in my eye and I think people see it and it's infectious and so it, it's it's good so please do like yourself know your worth and um, that you are amazing you're totally amazing each and every one of you on this zoom call has something brilliant to offer and i'd love to hear like all of you just send me a little send us a little message to give us that one thing that you know you're absolutely awesome at doesn't matter what it is and how weird and wonderful the more weird i love weird absolutely love weird don't be normal please don't be normal be weird be yourself be your brilliant weird self and I think that that would be my advice my takeaway because I'm living it you know um I'm a bit crazy I'm a bit nuts and you know what it's absolutely fine so do successful people intimidate you do you know what your strengths are and does our attitude impact on our mental health so next week, I'm going to be talking with Laura Willis, one of the UK's leading experts on digital well-being and management at work, and a thought leader on finding balance and thriving in a constantly on world. So we'll be talking about, can we turn technology off, or are we afraid of missing out? And can I encourage you to leave us a review on our podcast, as it really does help get the word out. Thanks so much for listening to Mentality Meets, conversations that explore mental health stories and strategies to help leaders like you change the culture of mental health in your workplace. Mm